What's up, Guardians and Hunter Mains? The time has finally come for my super anticipated and highly requested for Hunter PvP build. All right, I did kind of have to hype myself up there, but in all, I actually think that this is a really great build. So let's jump right into it. For this build, we're gonna be running Revenant, the Hunter subclass. Now, as far as abilities go, Marksman's Dodge does not reload your weapon here if you're using Mask of Bacchus, which for this build we will be. So I went with Gambler's Dodge, which will recharge your melee ability when you dodge near an enemy. Directional control from Strafe Jump is really great in PvP, Withering Blade, and Glacial Grenade. So with Glacial Grenade, what's going to happen is you're going to throw a grenade at somebody, and then you're going to activate your Shatter Dive. Uh, mine is bound to X, and it's going to blow them up and possibly kill or damage people around them. So how this happens is with these fragments. Whisper of Fissures increases the damage and size burst of stasis when you destroy a stasis crystal or defeat a frozen target whisper of shards shattering a stasis crystal temporarily boosts your grenade recharge rate shattering additional stasis crystals increases the duration of the benefit so this is a synergy basically you throw your grenade you shatter dive and you get energy back based on how much damage you've done to somebody or killing somebody with this I think it's a great synergy. To be honest, it's a little bit overpowered. It's probably gonna see some tuning in the future. So as of today, December 10th, this is currently a, you know, a thing in the game, but like I said, it might change. Now for our other aspect, we have Wither's Shroud. Dodging slows nearby targets. This is great with Bacchus. So somebody's gonna come and approach you or they're running at you, maybe they're aping at you with a shotgun. You use your dodge ability to basically teleport and get some distance and you will slow them. Another way that you can use this in a more offensive way is you can start running towards somebody and once you're close enough, you can dodge around them. You know, if you're heading straight at them, you can dodge and literally get behind them. So one, they're gonna be disoriented because where the F did this hunter just go? And two, they're gonna be slowed as well, giving you a great offensive and defensive exotic here. In my opinion, Mask of Bacchus is probably the best exotic EVP armor in the game. I, I know that's hard to say. I know a lot of people are gonna be like, what about one eye and transversive steps? I think this thing is just really great. It, it allows for so many amazing plays. You can be defensive, you can be offensive. It's just a lot of fun. Taking a closer look at the armor perk of Mask of Bacchus, we have Light Shift. Replaces your stasis subclass dodge ability with a longer range, faster moving shift that partially cloaks you during use. After shifting, your arc weapons deal increased damage to combatants for a short time. Note, this does not work in PvP. This only works in PvE. It is a 10% increase and it works fantastically in PvE as well with things like the 4th Horseman, Anarchy, or even the Ikelos SMG. Now one thing to keep in mind, when you actually activate your dodge with Mask of Bacchus, there is a 10 second cooldown where you will not recharge your ability. One of the nice things is though, if you die while that 10 second cooldown is still going, once you respawn, it will be completely gone and you'll be recharging ability energy once again. Now for this build, we're gonna be running 100 mobility because the mobility is going to reduce our class ability at least 30 resilience, that way uh, certain things like thorn that's buffed won't be two tapping us or things in empowering rifts won't be doing as much damage and 100 recovery. These are a, a staple for most builds, you know, 30 resilience and 100 recovery, but we went all out on mobility here. Now we also have 65 discipline, the intellect, the, the super is great on this one, but it's not the best super in the game. It's sort of a set it and forget it. If you're playing a normal Crucible match, you'll probably be getting your super at least twice, even with 22 intellect. And then we have 79 strength. So the shurukens or whatever these are called, the stasis shurukens, perfect these stack up to two if you hit somebody with two of these they get completely frozen one it will slow them so with 79 strength we're going to be getting these quite frequently the really nice thing about these is you can actually bounce these off the wall if somebody has run away and gotten away and get a kill on that 
Now, as far as mods go, I'm going to be running mobility mod on my helm, hand cannon targeting, shotgun targeting. Then on our arms, mobility, hand cannon loader, shotgun dexterity. Once again, mobility, unflinching hand cannon aim, unflinching shotgun aim. Once again, mobility. Now, I do have invigoration here. There wasn't many things that I saw worth slotting in here whatsoever, but we have Shotgun Scavenger and Powerful Friends. Now, Powerful Friends, the perk itself doesn't actually work here, like charging people with light. It is literally just to get 20 more mobility, so that way we can get to 100. Now, with this, all you have to do is you do have to have an arc mod slotted in so i could technically take this off and it will still work because of the fact that we also have radiant light so this is the same thing you have to have an arc mod slotted somewhere into your armor it doesn't have to be that exact armor piece it just has to be somewhere so this gives us another 20 strength and then we have distribution here and another mobility mod as far as weapons go, this is completely up to you. I'm not going to tell you what is the best weapon in my opinion that you should be running. But for my hand cannon boys out there, I use Hawkmoon. I love this. I've heard great things about Malfeasance, but I can't seem to hit the broadside of a barn with this thing. Ace of Spades is a fantastic exotic hand cannon as well as Thorn. I have seen people fragging out with Crimson lately and Strum. Or wait... Sturm. Sorry, a little dyslexia there. You can also run uh, Astral Horizons. This is a really great PvP shotgun if you have one of these from uh, Trials from last season, or you're going to be pushing to get one of these this season, maybe even the new Adept one. Now, I personally really like Fell Winter's Lie, and I know some of you guys are like, Wee! I don't have it. What the F, Bungie? But I believe it's not next season, but the following season, or maybe it is next season, this will be available for everybody to buy at the kiosk in the tower. So just be patient. You'll be able to get it soon. And everybody's going to be mapping each other with this thing. Some other options here, you can use duality. I've heard a lot of good things about Xenoclast. I have yet to get a good PvP role though. And then we have Seven Seraph CQC. I see a lot of people running around with this. I particularly don't really like it. It's not, you know, for me, but you know, hey, it's sort of probably the second best option, you know, from Fell Winters to Seven Seraph. It's uh, up to you. Nation of Beasts, also Waking Vigil. I didn't throw that in here, but these guns feel really crisp lately. I don't know what it is about these, but they're just feeling really good. But my Hawk Moon, and oh my goodness, can I not wait to be able to grind out to get opening shot and a rangefinder one and a killing wind one just to play around with them. I personally, I, I love this weapon. I think it's it's just, it's crisp. It has a fun perk on it. It just feels good all around. And yeah, this is, that's my loadout. This is the build. If you guys did enjoy this video, please make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. All of these things help with the YouTube algorithm. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace.